Good evening and welcome to Information Please, your Peoria Public Library on the air, bringing you information about your library and your community. This evening my guest is Amber Lowry from Peoria Public Library, but also from Amber's Originals. She has a wonderful display at the library right now that we'd like to tell you about. Hey Amber. Hi. Well, it's summer reading time and the theme is reading is so delicious. Course, Which is an amazing theme. I yeah. have to say I do love it. <laughs> Everybody. It's, people have been very creative with it. But you might have been the most creative and most dedicated of all um, because, of course, being on library staff, you knew about this theme early on. And as we can see, you are crocheting. Not knitting. Yes, not crocheting. knitting. I am crocheting. Um, I'll, I'll tell you, when we first were told what our theme was, I just had this, like, um, inner head explosion of all these ideas for uh, something to do uh, with a display and it was just like oh I could do that and mm -hmm. I could start with you know a little bitty display and do something or maybe we could have stuff at various locations and uh, the next thing I know I'm talking to you guys and I say what do I do I have all these pieces we got to do something so well, this book you told me was one of your inspirations it's called tasty crochet and in I, fact your exhibit is called Cooking with Crochet, yes. Tasty Textile Treats, and um, if people haven't heard the word fiber artist, the, that title fiber artist is, is people who do things like you're doing, it's far beyond utilitarian. I mean, everybody appreciates quilts, and they're utilitarian, but they're beautiful. And people like afghans, and they mm -hmm. like... Um, other things like a vest or um, a sweater or socks or something like that. As but, for me and mine, I like toys. <laughs> yeah, but but crocheting just for the sheer sake of creating an art piece is kind of different, and I'm not sure people know that you can do that. We, you've brought me some books here as a librarian. Of course, you know how to pull these things that mm -hmm. are. These books are all things that are not necessarily utilitarian, but are more decorative or art pieces. But we should talk a little bit about your display before we get too carried away with everything else. And it is on right now, and it runs through the July 31st. July 31st of 2012. And exactly. And it is available to anybody for free when they come into the library, if they take lower level one to our beautiful new gallery. And you have over 650 50 pieces. crocheted pieces, and it's absolutely astounding. Thank you. Um, <laughs> People, people are just marveling that, A, you can make all this stuff, and B, how realistic it looks. And, and it, well, you've gotten a lot of... Well, that was my goal for it. I wanted to, I wanted to be sure that yeah. it didn't... I said it was a banana, yet it kind of just looks like a yellow lump. No, I wanted it to look like a banana. Uh -huh. um, I scoured the internet for patterns that I couldn't find in books. Tasty Crochet, I, I used several of their patterns um, adapting where I needed to, mm -hmm. and then... I have some other books, which are all a part of the display now, mm -hmm. um, but I started looking for other sources for patterns, um, lionbrand.com, which is a website for the Lion Brand yarns, has several patterns, mm -hmm. and when I was looking for more, I wanted to find more to do to round out what I had. Which so. And so it, it was a long process. When did you actually start doing this? Um, I actually started at the beginning of March with my idea once I had been told, yeah, go ahead, make a display. I started in March and I wrote down all these things I wanted to make, made lists and you know, wrote out plate settings and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then um, I finished just before the end of May. So just, uh, just about three months I spent doing them and getting them done. So. And I, I asked you to crochet while we were talking because this is what we see every day in the break room and you just can crochet and talk at the same time, and I just want people to to see how you do this. But well, I've pulled up it's pulled up too a dark picture. To see, so. Yeah, yeah, it is. I've pulled up a picture. This is your sushi plate. Yes. And it's uh, of course everything's set on the actual plates and with utensils and everything you would use. But um, who a sushi plate? Why did you think to do that? Well, actually, sushi is one of the most popular items that's ever been done by many pattern writers. Oh, okay. um, actually, the term for making crocheted food and toys is called amigurumi, which is a Japanese word. And so it's very popular over there. And so naturally, things like sushi come up. There's also patterns for um, various other uh, 
food groups. Mm -hmm. um, dim sum is another one that's very popular. A lot of people say, oh, I didn't know there were other patterns for it. I just made up my own. I myself am allergic to seafood, so I had to go to a pattern to look how to make these things and make sure <laughs> they were right. So, Make sure they looked like the right thing. Well, we've got plenty more here. And um, this one is the pizza spaghetti. The Italian dinners. The Italian dinners, okay. And we've got pizza in a real pizza box, and you've got French, or is that Italian bread, and spaghetti and meatballs, and peppers up there in the bowl yes. on the top, and some peppers and an onion down front. And it's, it's interesting because when you just glance at it, you immediately think, oh, this is, this is a, you know, food, and then you look closer, and then the closer you look, the more amazed you are by the details. So, and of course we had, um, you know, wonderful people helping put things up, and we've got the some. programming department and our graphics department was yeah. amazing with getting this all set up to look as real as possible. Uh -huh. We've got some great things on the wall to go with it too. But it, and the fun thing about it is, it's a fun display. Whether you're a needle worker or you're a little kid, little kids are amazed by it I've, too. I've seen some. Uh, little kids go through and uh, it's right outside our local history department which is usually a fairly quiet area and all of a sudden you'll look outside and you'll hear little feet going oh look and um, <laughs> that's about the point where I run and hide. Uh, <laughs> this is your s'mores plate I yes. believe. Yes, We've got that graham one. crackers, chocolate, marshmallows on a fork. I had intended to make a marshmallow <laughs> on fire but I think fire and libraries don't go together so I left it out. Left the fire out and just did the marshmallows ready to go. Yeah. Well, on a, on a day when we're all getting ready for all of our cookouts and things, that seems like a good idea to think about s'mores. Well, let's not add the heat. Let's just add the fiber. Yeah. <laughs> That's a very basic uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Of With potato chips. Everybody's, lovely meal. One of my favorites. Everybody's favorite lunch, just still plain old peanut butter and jelly and chips. And is this something you had a pattern for? This is actually out of the Tasty Crochet book. She's okay. included several patterns including sandwiches and peanut butter and jelly is one of them so and then this is one of my favorites it's a little more sophisticated it's the cheese and wine and the the vegetable big vegetable basket how many different vegetables are in that basket well that one's the fruit basket oh and fruit that, sorry um i would say there's probably 20 different fruits in there um we have apples, green and red. We have oranges, uh, bananas, pears, limes, lemons, coconuts, you know, because you have to put the lime into coconut, um, <laughs> pineapples, pomegranates, peaches, plums. I made list after list to make sure that I was getting, I, I went to websites looking up names of fruits so that I made sure I had everything basic covered. Um, and then I went for more unusual fruits as well so yes. well and as you went on I do have to say that your co-workers began to challenge you I know I personally said where's the tomatilla and which they, made, they are in the vegetable basket a tomatilla so. so but this this just makes me want to go home and relax with some fine wine and cheese <laughs> <laughs> and we do have this is just a closer view of now is it do you have to sit and think about these patterns a lot or does, um, are you it, able it to depends. just pretty easily do them? It depends on the pattern and where the source is. If it's a book, um, usually I follow along and look at it and mm -hmm. um, I have it sitting right on my knees while I'm doing it. If it's something that I'm altering, I tend to look at it, do it as the pattern says, pull it back out, do it again, write it down so that I know next time I make it, it'll be right. Um, if it's something I'm making on my own, um, I have to stop and think about it, try it out, rip it back, try it out, rip it back. Was Maybe. there anything that you just said, no, this doesn't look like food and didn't put in the display? Several things. Several things. I had a pattern for a papaya, and despite the fact that I used a much larger crochet hook than requested, and I used bright colors, it just it came out looking like nothing. It looked like a gigantic candy nerd. <laughs> and um, I ended up taking it to work because... Uh, papayas are not a favorite fruit of mine and I took it to work and I said does this look like a papaya and everybody's like well a no. little one so I ended up saying no I'm not going to do those I'm not going to at that point I didn't have the time to sit and figure out how to make it bigger or better yeah. so yeah 
And this, I think, is one of the last things you made, isn't it? Yes, the and I will blame turkey. that totally on the uh, programming department yes, who decided I needed a turkey at the yeah, last minute. And then minute. once you did a turkey, they decided you should do a tadurkin, which at which that point you said Not, no. no. <laughs> which for those who don't know, a tadurkin is a chicken stuffed inside a duck stuffed inside a turkey. Yes. And we really didn't need that anyway. So there's your, your turkey and your Thanksgiving dinner with the corn and the little pumpkins. And it looks tasty. Well, I, I would recommend it unless you're in need of a lot of fiber. <laughs> yes, there's no fat and no um, high salt or anything, but it is a lot of fiber to go through your system. Yeah. This is a couple of drumsticks and green beans and mashed potatoes with My butter. My mashed potatoes with butter. Mashed potatoes with butter, yeah. And it's set very nicely in a doily. Yes. Just as if it's the real thing. Okay, and what is this one? That one is called a roast beef dinner. It's supposed to be more like a traditional roast beef dinner with Yorkshire pudding, oh, okay. although it's next to impossible to do a good gravy. So um, we instead chose to do asparagus with hollandaise sauce and add a few carrots, and they just look like some um, interesting rolls yeah. instead of Yorkshire pudding. Yeah. So Very good. And that, is that in the same case with that? The that is in the case dinner? with the so Thanksgiving like, dinner. So they're the meat meals. <laughs> there they are. The ones that you spend time and effort on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And grandma comes for, or maybe go to grandma's house to eat that. This is fun too because this, this is, is one of my favorite pieces. Yeah, um, so many different textures and colors and things in this. So when oh, you tell us what this one is, this one has the. Um, it has the vegetable tray, the sliced fruit tray, the uh, sandwich, and the sandwich fixins. And this one was one of my favorites because actually the relish tray was one of the first things I finished completely, had everything done uh, for that particular section. And I started putting it on the uh, tray and I'm looking at it and I was taking pictures and posting them to Facebook or one of my blogs and I was like, no, this is like the coolest thing ever. And um, but no, these were one of my favorites. I kind of wanted to just keep adding to it, but I didn't know what else to put in there. So <laughs> It is fun because you see all the lunch meats and the, the yes. sliced onions and the sliced peppers. And, and the pickles. And, and the yeah, pickles. Bacon. And, mm -hmm. and of course the bacon. Bacon, so. everything. And just not good to look at right before lunch because you'll get hungry. There's a close-up of some of your some of your uh, meats and your condiments and yes we wanted to have a variety so mm -hmm. i made sure we did as much as possible with the colors and the different types and textures so and i had asked you well what do people do with these things and your reply had been well some people give them for gifts or whatever and i said then you get it for gift what do you do with it and well you're talking about about uh, people using it for decoration and all. but I, I have a friend who one year I didn't know what to send her for her birthday and I had a collection mm -hmm. of pieces and she's very big on Thanksgiving so I sent her stuff to put in her cornucopia for Thanksgiving. Um, another time I had done a collection of these for another display and I didn't know what I was going to do with it and I sent it to my friend in Australia who gave them to her one-year-old son for his birthday gift because uh, he has a little play kitchen that he oh. likes to play with. Um, and then shortly after that, I made um, a couple bags that went to a local preschool uh, for their kitchen at school because mm -hmm. they had been told to bring like empty boxes and stuff like that yeah, for their to, kitchen. To the kitchen. And I, I asked somebody I know, I said, well, what do you do for fruits and vegetables? Because most play foods are too small. Yeah. So these yeah. are more life size yeah. and more fun yeah, and softer. Yeah. <laughs> And this is one we haven't had up. This is your fruit, yes. isn't it? This is the sliced fruit collection. It's got apples and star fruit and kiwi and uh, persimmons, which are the pink and orange to the back. Mm -hmm. um, I'll tell you, I've had a persimmon once. I don't remember it being that color, but <laughs> that was the color recommended. Um, also put some berries in there, which were quite a bit of fun to make. Yeah. Don't let the cat get those. <laughs> no. You're paying for that vet bill. Yeah. And hamburger, hamburgers with fries. I mean, who doesn't love hamburgers and fries, uh, at least in a display? Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I think everybody loves them, even though most of us are told we can't eat them. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's hamburgers and fries, great, great piece of art. This one's fun, I think. That one was uh, one of my last minute additions. Um, it's a 
potato chips or not potato chips or tortilla, tortilla chip. chips with um, Mexican sauces like salsa, guacamole, and uh, queso with uh, nice little bits in it. So <laughs> they're obviously flour corn chips. Well, it, it depends on the color. White uh, corn, maybe. <laughs> white corn. Um, and that's my quesadilla and uh, tacos to go with the rest of the Mexican meal. Had I had more time, I might have had more to go with it. Yeah. So, um, but it's you had plenty, plenty of effort put into this, no matter what. I think what. at one point I, somebody, uh, somebody said, "Stop, just stop." And yeah. I, I yeah, said, I but, think but, that might have been me. And this is what you see when you come into the gallery. That's how the, you know you're on the right floor. Yeah, you're on the right floor. And uh, we didn't have a picture here of the, the ice cream cone, but there's there's one of it. And then it's just cases and cases of, of your work, which is so much fun. And Well, um, I'm glad people have been enjoying it. Yeah. So, And we should talk about, of course, you're right at the library, and you can go grab a book and hop on the Internet whenever. But um, people who haven't crocheted before and are interested we even have beginning books like this one complete idiot's guide to crochet and do you think people can teach themselves to crochet from a absolutely book? i i learned from one person um, but i only learned one stitch and that's what i did for 15 years before i got a book and i started teaching myself how to do other things this is how i knit i knit in a straight line i can yeah. knit a scarf that's it well one of my <laughs> one of my favorites was i did a stitch for years and years and nobody knew what it was because it wasn't listed in any book mm -hmm. and so I started looking around I finally found a book it was listed in and I didn't care that it was a $35 book and I was broke I bought that book just to say it is right here it's a um, true stitch yeah. but um, I did teach myself um, other stitches from books and it's especially difficult for me as I'm left-handed um, okay. but with determination and perseverance you could you can do it. Do it. Yeah. So, and um, we looked at this book already, Tasty Crochet. But another thing that you've got this Pop Goes Crochet, and so this book has fun, fun projects, things like bikinis and jackets and boot covers and um, just a lot of things that you wouldn't normally think to go with crochet. Crochet is not just about scarves and blankets and hats and stuff like that. And sweaters. No, it's it's absolutely about finding new things to do with it. Mm -hmm. I myself am making string bags for when you go to like a farmer's market and you want to have a bag but you don't want it to be full. Yeah, and yeah. you don't want it to be bulky. You want yeah. it to be easy to carry until you need to put things in it. Well, and speaking of hats, we've got this book on crochet hats, but this is fun hats. Oh, yes. These, these hats are... But yet most hats are pretty practical, mm -hmm. uh, especially made with cotton or acrylic yarn, mm -hmm. both of which hold in the heat and keep you warm during the uh, winter months. Yeah, so. you can use... This one looks like it's a sun hat, almost like a straw hat, which you... Can you crochet with raffia, that type of... You can. It, it does take a bit of skill and a bit of persistence because it is slightly different than working with a very uh, wound mm -hmm. yarn that's ready to go. Yeah, because it's a little looser. And then all the way over there you have crocheted flowers, which, which I have seen, you know, bouquets. And of, these actually use a variety of um, yarn types. This particular yarn that I have here today is a cotton yarn, but there are plenty of yarn types like um, acrylic, which is what I use for most of my display mm -hmm. because it's sturdier. And um, this has some fun fur yarn and probably some cotton in there. I've seen people take and make flowers and use them as dish scrubbies. Oh, okay. You know, so that when they're washed, they mm -hmm. sit on the counter and look pretty. Look cute, yeah. You know. Um, you could put those on hats, you know, make a hat out of the one book and put a yeah. flower in something else. This one, they use them for decorations on buckets and... Um, mm -hmm. I've I've seen people who I've seen I've been to events where you had a crocheted flower and a name tag in different colors to designate groups. Absolutely. I'm not sure that people go to that much trouble anymore, but it's a it's a fun thing. It is a back fun thing. in the day when I was younger and ladies groups met. <laughs> That's what they did, and of course Christmas, any holiday is a great time. But and now now's now's about the time to get started if well there is a reason it's christmas in july we crafters got to get started if we want to be ready by christmas if you want to have things ready for christmas this is the time to do it and we have got this just this tiny little book has got 20 patterns in it but we have shelf after shelf after shelf of books on 
not only crochet, but knitting, sewing, quilting. You're also a quilter. Yes. And would you say we have a good stock of I would say we have a very good stock. We need a few more in the area I'm more interested in, which is paper piecing, but you know, finding a good paper piecing book is um, somewhat Harder difficult. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I learned online myself, so <laughs> um, that was right. quite a bit of fun. Yeah, we, we do have a wonderful selection of books for all sorts of creative endeavors, whether it's painting or you know, working with stained glass or crochet or whatever you want to do. And I try to highlight that because I don't think people realize that we're such a source for... Oh, I know the crafters know where they are, but yeah. yes, we, we do have a lovely collection of the various uh, craft types. Uh, we have books on card making, on scrapbooking. You know, there there's a million books where you don't even have to look at it. I don't necessarily look at this book for how to make it. I look at it for an idea of something to do. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like to know that there's something out there that could spark another idea. Right. Um, when I started doing these, I looked at what was available and I said, okay, where's this? And I couldn't find a pattern for what I wanted, so I had to make it myself. And, you know, or I had to go to another source and find a better way to do it. So, and I wouldn't have done that had I not looked at a book and said, wait, this is missing, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. Right, are you gonna write your own book? <laughs> um, not at this time. <laughs> I, I've, it's Christmas in July, you know, I got to get that done first. Yeah, you, so. have, you have to have to do all your Christmas things. Well, and I think people don't realize also that we also have a great many magazines yeah, we on have, crafts, um, and so we have that constant supply, which you could spend an absolute fortune buying craft magazines. Absolutely. And, the, we and then have, your, uh, your people who share your house with you are going to get mad because you've got these and it's, it's not going. like it's not like you know people magazine where at the end of the week you throw it out yeah. a lot of times people keep their uh, magazine you keep them because there's because, a pattern you may want yeah. to do one day and and we crafters we know how it is when we see a pattern and for whatever reason we don't save it especially if it's something on the internet and you mm -hmm. go back and you look and the person who created it has taken it down or has done something with it and you're mm -hmm. just left going wait, wait where to go I but need that with so. the magazines they're at the library you know you can get a hold of them and yes. see them and the other thing is people who don't have high-speed internet and there is so many resources out there you can come to the library with Absolutely. your own laptop or your phone or whatever and use our Wi-Fi to download some of those bigger files or you can get on the public computers and do that which is a wonderful advantage and now I think we have over 160 public computers yes at and the library. It, it's amazing I mean there are some absolutely great websites out there that will help you find what you're looking for mm -hmm. uh, one of my personal favorites is a pattern website called crochet pattern central and they're all available for free and they have a lot of subcategories so if you're looking for something you there, can find there something there yeah. um, but you know without it you you can Google for a long time and yeah. not find what you're looking for. Yeah. So. Yeah. And uh, I don't know that you know, that may be one of the things we don't have in our e-library. We don't actually have a resource for crafters. But our, our e-library course is full of so many other resources, serious research, yes. and, research and items. Yes, and there may be information mm -hmm. available. We just haven't dug it out we yet haven't because found we're, it yet. we're still looking at the other stuff. But. The nice thing is, is there is a wonderful online community, mm -hmm. you know, of that, crafters that are mm -hmm. willing to help and share and teach and right. get people going with it. And if you come into Peoria Public Library and you haven't used the online resources, or you're not familiar with it, or you're thinking, oh, I, you know, I'm going to get out and do something else. Will librarians help you? Absolutely, find? we're we're more than eager to help you find what you're looking for. And sometimes, you know, with the e-resources, it does take a little bit of learning how to navigate the website. We didn't all start with Google and, you know, let it be the be all end all. No, yeah. we're, we have plenty of resources that are a lot of fun and, you know, do take getting used to, mm -hmm. you know, and as they say, with many things, practice does make perfect. So we're happy to help get people started. And it's, it's a great tool for us too, because it helps us learn more to help people better. So. Right, and if they come in and they ask someone who knows nothing about crafting, they will refer them to another 
staff member such as you who does know where to, where to find things and do things. So that's one of the things we do with our new program we call Roving Reference, but that's what has our staff out on the floor able to answer questions. But what we do there, instead of having all our little departments, our staff knows who knows more than they do and will refer you. And Absolutely. very very soon we'll have new communication devices out on the floor too that you guys can almost use like a walkie-talkie even to get a hold of somebody and say, you know, can you help this person with this? Absolutely. So that's We're looking forward to that. Yeah, so. yeah. I want to review. It's been a while since we said um, what this display was. It's Cooking with Crochet, Tasty Textile Treats. If anybody turned in, tuned in late, it's in our gallery through the end of July 2012. It's free. It's open when the library is on Monday through Saturday, 9 to 6 at mm -hmm. the main library, and it's on lower level one and the gallery is always going to have something exciting in it yes and it's a, it's a is, fun place and you know we've had some excellent stuff we before have, this we, so. we had the um, a fine romance which was about the Jewish songwriters and musicians we've had a couple nice chow, art shows yeah we had the chow artists who had never exhibited all together before they had pretty much been confined to their first Friday tours and we've had um, we had the quilt and pottery exhibit, which, which was, was amazing. Yeah, at, right up your alley. Right, <laughs> I took a lot of pictures of those just because yeah. they were beautiful and inspirational and yes, they, just an amazing thing. And when you see a quilt displayed with the beautiful lighting and the the things, that you really understand the concept of fiber art, just as you do with these many, many pieces you've made. And what's going to happen to this collection when it leaves Peoria Public Library? Well, that's kind of up in the air at this point. I know a few pieces have been um, designated to go to new homes because um, I know particularly one person in programming was very excited about the bok choy oh, that we right. have. So um, it's going to find a new home with her when the display is done. Um, but I am not opposed to having it uh, be displayed elsewhere. elsewhere okay. so. All right. All right, thank you so much, Amber, thank for you, coming Tammy. on. And look how far you've gotten in just the time we've been talking. <laughs> <laughs> Get in and see Cooking with Crochet before it's gone. It's a wonderful exhibit. And be really inspired at what somebody can do with, with their crochet hook and yarn. Peoria Public Library has always got new displays in the gallery, as long as plenty of e-resources, books on crafting. And we'd love to see you there. Stop in and see us soon. See you next week on Information, please.